What's up everyone? John from ARTV. It's time for a review of the ninth album by rock and emo band Jimmy Eat World. I wouldn't necessarily throw the emo label on them these days, but obviously that's what a lot of people knew them for back in their earlier days with albums like Clarity and even Bleed American. Those were fantastic albums that came right around the turn of the century, 1999 and 2001. And then obviously they continued in their success with albums like Futures and Chase This Light. And I didn't find that much favor with a handful of their albums after Futures. Damages, their most recent album in 2013, was just like Breakup Central, and that was not one that I really cared for all that much. Not saying that it was necessarily bogged down with a certain particular problem, it just felt a bit bloated as a whole. And even though it was one of their shortest albums, it just felt a bit tedious. And with Integrity Blues, it's nice to see the band with a keen observation and awareness for the world around them. They're not one of those bands that are constantly trying to write songs about their youth or where they were 20 years ago. Jimmy Eat World have been a band for 23 years and we've constantly seen them evolve. Even if it hasn't always been pretty, at least they're trying new things. And here on Integrity Blues, we see them teaming up with the producer Justin Meldell Johnson, who's worked with M83, Paramore, several other established acts, and I've actually really enjoyed his production, so I was excited to find out that he was working on this project. And I can tell that he had a big hand in crafting some of these songs. The electronics make their way in, almost kind of an electronic rock type thing on some of these tunes, adding in a deep bass groove. I mean, some of these songs are just very bass heavy, and you'll see some synthesizers on moments like Pretty Grids and transitioning into Pass the Baby, two of my favorites right there. And like I was talking about, this band isn't naive as they used to be. Obviously, albums like Clarity and Bleed American, even Futures, that was kind of a turning point for them, probably my favorite Jimmy Eat World album along with Clarity. It's two moments that come in their discography that really highlight different aspects of them, but we saw Futures as kind of that turning point where they started being very self-aware of what was going on around them and saw things from a more mature point of view. And I see this album as kind of almost a correspondence to some of those earlier moments. Even though Sure and Certain was the first official single from this album, Get Right was the first taste we had, and I really enjoyed kind of that rough bass groove that we had going on there. Just a rocking track that really saw them kind of coming back and doing so with a force to be reckoned with. And then we got Sure and Certain, which is more of a traditional Jimmy Eat World song. I do enjoy this one, but whenever the album really gets going for me, it's whenever we start taking a deeper dive into new explorations, new territory, and we see that, first of all, with It Matters. That's one that I really enjoyed from a vocal point of view. I thought Atkins sounded fantastic on this track, just a little bit different in the way that it plays with the instrumental vibes with the guitar and the outside instrumentation makes it one of my favorite tunes overall. And the album really goes on a winning streak right after that with tracks like Pretty Grids. That one is just phenomenal from a lyrical and storytelling point of view. And I obviously care for the synthesizer tones like I was talking about before and the guitars that match up with that as well. Pretty Grids is something unlike Jimmy Eat World have done before. And I like that they're doing this this far into their career. They're making songs that aren't totally just disowning who they were before, but they're doing something and saying, hey, we can add layers on top of this and build ourselves even stronger. So Pretty Grids has a fantastic flow to it. I love the way that it just ends up. It kind of flows perfectly in to Pass the Baby. It's got that synthesizer kind of fluttering, and then we have a slow start to Pass the Baby. That's one that builds in intensity, and the lyrical content on that one is kind of hard to decipher. It starts off with this slow groove that builds and builds, and then we see the loudest guitar moments on the album coming in the second and final stage of this track's presence. I love that it has a life of its own in its first half, and then just a evolves into something so much more. I don't want there to be confusion whenever I say that this band has been observational on this record. I don't want you to think that I'm saying, oh, they've never done that before, because obviously Jimmy E. World are a very observational band. They make a lot of commentary on themselves, society. Obviously, Atkins has a lot of struggles and a lot of dark tendencies, I suppose, with his mind and whether it be relationships, friendships, and just what he sees in the world around him. Obviously, that's something that he's commented on many times before. I just like that the band is continuing to grow and build upon that as they age even more. And it's kind of like almost advice on some of these tunes. And of course, storytelling as well. Paul Roger, the closer on this thing, which is I believe a brand of champagne from what I'm understanding with what I've looked up so far. It's just one of those closers that's almost paralleled with something like 23 or some of their other awesome closers. A longer track clocking in at nearly seven 
minutes long. It's one that kind of details a relationship, everything that's going on here. He doesn't know why maybe he's come to this hotel room that night, but it really does kind of sum up the album in an odd way. I see it as being the perfect closer, and once again, it starts off kind of slow. It comes out of the title track that is one of my least favorites, to be quite honest. I don't really care for the vocal style on that one. The lyrical content is pretty cool, but I don't really care for the instrumental that goes along with it. It just doesn't really seem like it gets that much momentum, but it is a slower tune and Paul Rogers starts off that way and I was hoping you know this is going to be another one of those epic closers please and it doesn't disappoint in that regard I feel like there is a lot of tension here just almost cutting like a knife it has a really really strong chorus love some of the guitar parts on it as well have to commend them there and as far as guitars go all throughout this album I think the band did a great job some of the drumming stood out on Paul Roger like I mentioned already Get Right has great bass and guitar grooves on it. Sure and Certain even has a nice little guitar pattern that I didn't really see coming from them, especially on a lead single. You With Me has become a bit tiresome to me as I've played this album over and over again. It's the lead off track on Integrity Blues, and we see the guitar structure there paired up with some electronics, not really sounding that great, but obviously we have so many moments on the album to contrast that. And especially, I have to give praise and highlight the tune through. It's the shortest one on this album, but it's one of the most powerful. I love how hopeful it is. The guitars soar on the bridge of this thing and just are very simplistic, but they also have so much inertia and life in them. And I love that it just keeps the album driving forward. It's probably one of my favorite Jimmy Eat World songs from the past decade. This song is just phenomenal and towering. The End is Beautiful feels a little bit too familiar as well. Kind of like the issues I was having with You With Me. That's one that I just felt like I was a little bit tiresome that kicked off the album. The End is beautiful. It's got this slow acoustic guitar, and I understand that he's kind of pouring out some emotion into this track. It just doesn't feel as genuine as the majority of the moments on here. But fortunately, I do think the majority of Integrity Blues is very worthwhile. Their best album in quite some time, not knocking all of their material from the mid to late 2000s and the early 2010s, because there were some great tracks on stuff like Chase This Light and Invented as well. My Best Theory was actually a really, really good lead-off single there. It's just that Integrity Blues as a whole, as an album, as a 47 minute piece, it flows really well. There's a connectivity about them and I see this having a longer life than some of those albums. For me personally, I'm gonna give Integrity Blues a strong 3.5, maybe even a light four. If you guys have heard the latest from Jimmy Eat World, let me know your thoughts on it in the comments section down below. Don't forget to smash the like button on this review and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already because friends don't let friends go unsubscribed. If there's other albums you'd like to see me tackle, sound off in the comments section. And other than that, you can find me on my social media here, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all that good stuff. And I will see you guys very soon right here on ARTV.